You're creating your world starts from the discovery of your word. I said that to create your world, it has to start from the discovery of your word. No word, no world. Because ideally, there will be no world without the word of God. John 1, 1 to 3. John 1, 1 to 3. Says, in the beginning was the word. Please follow me. I'm trying to lay a foundational scripture. I've been asked to share my experience, but I want to lay a foundation. John 1, 1, 3 says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. He was with God. Now referring to the word as he. In the beginning, through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that was made. Now let's head to the book of the beginning to have a confirmation of this word. Genesis 1, 1, 3 reads, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That mentioned God first. And the earth was without void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God, so we've heard about God. Now we're here about the Spirit of God. We are here to hear about Jesus. Moved upon the face of the waters, and God said. So Jesus was introduced. God, the Word of God. God said, let there be light, blah, blah. John 17, 5. I'm running. Says, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. Speaking about Jesus. Glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. So before the world began, before we started creation, Jesus was there. Just laying emphasis and foundation on the fact that now you have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We are going to see where this comes into relevance. Jesus is the word of life. He is the word that actually births life. In 1 John 1, 1 to 4, it tells us that that which was from the beginning, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life, speaking about Jesus. The life appeared. We have seen it and testified to it and we proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father, which was with the Father, has appeared to us. Still the emphasis, Jesus is the word of God. In fact, at one point, Jesus was, God was speaking Jesus. Let there be light, and there was light. God moved to another stage, where he's not just speaking the, Jesus. He made the word, Jesus himself, become flesh. Just to show you that every time God speaks, it's not just the capacity to make it become a reality, it becomes a reality. Is someone following me? Are we together? Okay, we'll move down. Now, there are two containers, basically, uh, that I follow when it comes to creation story. One of it is the fact that the Bible tells us that we are made in God's image. Now, follow me. If the Bible says we are made in God's image, we are made in God's likeness, that means we are some form of God's replica. And everything God has the capacity to do, we have the capacity to do in some form. Or some people say many form. That forms the basis of the creation story. That forms the basis for your life. That forms the basis for creating your own story. So you have God as the creator. He has created you in his image. So you are creators. The creator created you in image. You are creators. You have the capacity to create your world. Now, whether you create that world or not is now a thing of choice. Are you willing to create that world? You have the power in your hands. It's up to you. It is the greatest production story ever that the creator created creators. If you refuse to create, it is not God's fault. It's your choice. He has already given you the power. How do we know he's given you the power? John 1, 12. said, to them that believes, notice, to them that believes, he gave them the power to manifest sonship or to become the sons of God. Ephesians 1, 13 says, when you believe, you receive the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit of God is the power. How many people have power here? How many people have the power here? Yep. It's one thing to be a believer. I mean, you come to church, you profess your beliefs. But it's another thing to have the Holy Spirit. That's another dimension entirely. The dimension of power. If you're here, you've not received the Holy Spirit. I enjoin you to do as much. Meet ministers, meet people. I mean, up there. It doesn't, you don't need the senior pastor to receive the gift or the power of the Holy Spirit. Anyone that's filled with the Spirit of God can lay his hands and release the Spirit. You need it. 
to thrive in the world we are right in right now. Praise the Lord. Okay. The power to create. The big question is, so you know that you have the power to create. Why are you not creating? You know God created you. You know you are created in God's image. You know in God consists the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So he has bettered you. He has given that capacity inside you. You have received it. So why are you not creating? I would say it's because of pseudo-ignorance. Pseudo-ignorance is false ignorance. I think pseudo-ignorance is worse than ignorance. Ignorance is you don't know. But pseudo-ignorance is you know. But it's fake. It, it's pretense. You are pretending as if you don't know. It's more dangerous. Tell your neighbor, get to a point where you actually know God and know God for yourself. Tell your neighbor, know God for yourself. It's very key. Stop relying on other people's revelation. Because as we'll see, revelation is a basic key to discovering who you are and where you need to be. First of all, you cannot, you do not know who you are if you don't know whose you are. You do not know who you are if you don't know whose you are. It's very important. You can have 300 people sit in church here and 300 people are feeling different because of the revelation they have about God. Someone can decide to go about his life's journey, chasing a career, chasing a business. And you wonder, is this person mad? The revelation of God he has is not the revelation of God you have. Someone will come, and hear, come out here and say, I can never be poor. You two, you come out and say you can never be poor. But you experience poverty almost all your life. The person that said I cannot be poor has experienced a revelation you need to touch before you begin to open your mouth and repeat the same thing. Otherwise, you just be an echo. Basically, two kinds of revelation. Is someone following? The natural world, general revelation, sorry, and then specific revelation. General revelation, specific revelation. So two kinds of revelation you need to move your life forward or to create your own world. General revelation and specific revelation. I'm glad I laid the foundation. And as I share this, I'll share some of the stories that has been my story or has resonated with me over time. General revelation. There's revelation going on at any point in time. As you're coming to church today, there was revelation on the road. You were not paying attention. As you slept yesterday, there was revelation. As you're going home, there's revelation. On the billboard, revelation. Two people are fighting, revelation. I mean, I was in my office upstairs a few days ago, and for some reason, I stepped out. I saw two men fighting. A man, one downfo and a private car. I don't know who uh, had the issue. But I just pulled out my camera, uh, camera instinct and started videoing to watch later. You know, free Netflix. At some point, they were just hitting themselves, hitting themselves. The downfall driver came out like, like he was going to win that round. I mean, he was already, you know how this braggado jumping and jumping and all those stuff. By the time the private car, private car owner gave him two punches, the guy, the guy almost slumped. That's revelation for somebody. Fighting is not good. If you have gragra put in your pocket, there's someone that will deck you and beat you. Is it relevant to you? It may not be, but it might be relevant to somebody else. So that's revelation, right? So you can get revelation from your natural world. Why do we say it? You know, when Jesus, when God spoke, he said, let there be light, right? He even spoke you into being. That means the things that came out of his mouth, they're actually words. They're revelation from him. Like I said, it's the perception that matters. Revelation from everything happening around you is part of general revelation. Your conscience, the one God puts inside of you. I mean, there's right, there's wrong. You don't need someone, a prophet to say, I mean, sleeping outside marriage is wrong. It's a conscience, there's a knowing. You don't need to open, I mean, it's just there. It's clear. You don't need anyone to tell you that um, stealing someone's Bible is stealing. Stealing a Bible is stealing. Because when you take something that does not belong to you, it's stealing. But in someone's revelation, might be, I'm taking the word of God. It's my own. I mean, some conscience things there. Uh, people are revelations. There's something called people watching. It's a hobby for some people. You just step up, sit down, and just view people, look at people the way they are, and learn from it. It's part of revelation. Scripture, general scripture, general scripture, general scripture, the way they read to you, is revelation. It's general revelation. If you go to the book of Proverbs, it's full of general revelation. Wisdom. The one you don't need extra revelation, extra teaching to understand. It just gives you bam, bam. If you take ten of them and study them for the whole month and follow it, your life will change because revelation changes life. That's about general revelation. Let's go to more specific revelation. Things like dreams. You know, our senior pastor has said it severally uh, in this place, how he got into naturopathy. He said 
I mean, for those of you that have not heard the story, that he will be sleeping. He will be having dreams of him. He's a medical doctor, in case you don't know. Dr. Chris is a medical doctor. But he dropped his stethoscope to preach the word of God. But he said every time you'll be dreaming, see himself handling stethoscope. You forget, next time, stethoscope. Next time, stethoscope. It took time for him to realize that God was taking him back to his profession, but giving him a dimension to it. Perhaps the reason why he didn't want to uh, become a doctor, uh, like the practice kind of doctor, regular one we know, is because he wanted to do something different. But here's God saying, yes, later. Yes, I trained you, took you through a process, because I wanted to be a, a different kind of doctor, because of something I prepared for you. What has God prepared differently for you? How do you access it? Dreams is one of it. I shared the other day that, in the course of December to January, I've had one particular dream. I told my wife, it reoccurred. I told her, it reoccurred. And for me, the kind of person I am, I don't dream. Dream is not my, God doesn't speak to me like dreams through. When I sleep, the kind of dreams I dream in myself, I'll be taking lunch in Dubai. I'll be in Canada. I'll just be going, just walking over the earth. Just moving around the earth. So when I dream a particular dream where it's reoccurring, I know God is trying to tell me something. I mean, when I came to service one of those days, I began to realize what God was telling me because he confirmed it. So God can speak to you through dreams, especially the ones that are reoccurring. Some people have said, document your dreams. It may be difficult to do, but that's a path to follow. Because sometimes when you wake up, you can't remember anything. But there are connections. Some dreams are not repetitive. But a dream today can be connected to a dream tomorrow, connected to a dream next tomorrow. You need to find that out. Praise the Lord. Are we following? Visions. Visions are also revelations. I mean, I've said it, said it severally. There are different kinds of visions. God can just show you something. He will just show you. God, God can show you the kind of business he wants you to enter. God can show you the kind of spouse he wants to give you. Someone say, ah, is, that, is that possible? Yes, it's possible. When I, when, I, um, when I asked my wife out, by the way, it was, not a, it was not a funny experience. I was hoping that when I asked her out, it would be something like they do in, in American films. But the way the girl shouted at me, ah, the normal me, I won't even go back to her. Because she didn't look like. The lady I wanted to marry, Pastor Haiti, didn't look like at all. Like, Pastor Haiti had only one black skirt. And then she, Pastor Haiti, I don't want to say something. I'm not allowed to say some things on the pulpit. But she was not looking like it at all. So that by the time I was asking her out, she was looking around and saying, okay, why me? What's, what's, why? But it was revelation. It was visions, what I saw, you know. Because at that point, it may, what am I saying is maybe I should pause. For young people, as you get towards the age of marriage, you need to find out what did God say about this marriage. There has to be a word. You know why? Because storms will come. When the storms come, it's the revelation of the marriage that you got that will keep you. It is what will keep you. In my own case, so one of those days I, I told her, I said, God didn't say you're my wife, but I, I, I perceive because I've been with you, you've been my friend for some time. I see the values you have. And one of the things I want in my marriage is, I don't like wahala. I don't like stress. I don't like drama. I've experienced drama in relationships. I'm not interested. I want to wake up and be sure that everybody is okay. Don't stress my life. I saw it, but I, I wanted a confirmation. So one of those days, I was reading through a book. And the book had to do with stocks. And in that stocks, it was talking about, was talking about private placement and public offers. Private placement is a round of security where, um, for example, Mike Zuckerberg, before he started Facebook, he called a few of his friends. That's private placement. That's okay. Ah, see this. Put money inside. Nobody knows about it. You know? But when it's public offer, everybody knows about it. People start jostling for it. As I was reading through that book, book the picture of my wife fell in my mind. And I heard it clearly. That woman may not look like it, but it's private placement for you. You either take it now or wait till the time when she becomes what she becomes and people will rush in after her. Quickly, I went to Selma. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's study these things fast, fast. Then I began to work on addressing someone that had only one black skirt, one shoe. I'm sure that shoe, when he sleeps at night, it will, it, will, it will be trying to hide from her so that she won't pick her up in the morning. And then I bought her, her first, her first ever pair of jeans I bought for her, yes. And then she went to school and began to combine some little stuff. She said that. Okay, by the way, I married her in a final year because of Asu. The plan was after, but Asu delayed. And me, I couldn't hold myself. We had to do it pa, 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 before I commit what I'm not supposed to commit. She said when she went to school, that toasters increased by over 150 percent. Wait, oh, you saw a young lady because she was looking somewhat. You didn't see what she could be. Come on, somebody. I'm speaking to somebody here. The person you may want to marry, 
the kind of business you may want to do may not look like it. But God is keeping it on private placement for you. Because if it goes out there, people will rush it and you might lose it. Miracles. That's another way of revelation. You see, there are miracles you go through that when people tell you there are no miracles, you just laugh. Someone said, anyone that says there's no miracles, when he needs the miracle, you believe in the miracle. One of my greatest miracles is the miracle of healing. I believe in healing. I mean, if, 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 if someone falls on the floor and dies today, maybe God allowed it. But it does not change the fact that God heals. That's the truth. If someone has COVID today and disappears, it's gone. But it does not change the fact that God has also healed some people. Of, we'll talk about divine providence. Has healed some people of that same COVID. One of my greatest strategy, tragedies, I mean, I fell ill one time when I went to the East, when I was still, those early years, some 10 years ago. I felt so ill that I was convinced I was going to die. I was convinced, I, was, I knew I was going to, I had seen it. It was consistent pain, particularly from the head. My head was so heavy, for I prayed, I, I did everything I could do. It could not work. But guess where the healing came? One of those days I was praying. That day I said, look, I was going to give up on my faith. See, God knows you. You can't deceive him. If your faith is failing, tell him your faith is failing you. And that's where the scripture talks about. Help my, help my own belief. I told him, see, if you don't help my own belief, at this point I'm going. And then while I was in the room, thinking, meditating, I heard a voice, loud voice. Hello, if you are here and you think God does not speak, you are deceiving yourself. God speaks. God's voice can be so loud, you will, you will, you will run out naked from this place. And you will know who spoke. And I heard straight, do you know what a dark room looks like? I say, yes. When you put lantern in a dark room and you are in between the lantern and the wall, what do you see on the wall? I said, a figure. He said, what kind of figure? I said, ugly, distorted figure. And I heard, that sickness is not you. You are still your normal self. That sickness is like that shadow. It's like a figment of your imagination. Then I heard again, what happens when you have full Nepal light? I said the shadow disappears. Immediately, I came back to normal. Not 20%, not 10%, 101%. How can you tell me healing is not? You can't tell me that. I've experienced it. So as much as you go for general revelation concerning creating your world, ensure you have personal revelation. These are the things that will take you through the storm. Am I, am I talking to somebody here? Very important. It will take you through the storm. Your experiences. I've heard people say, ah, uh, I, I went to, I tried to get admission, I couldn't get admission, so I went for architecture. I don't even like the architecture. It doesn't make sense. Sometimes God allows you to pass through things for some things. You need to see an architect that's into tailoring. My brother. It's like, it's like drawing gram. It's a different level. So sometimes God takes you through certain experiences because of where he's taking you to. Who would have thought that a boy that was at the back end of the city, rearing sheep. What has sheep and shepherding got to do with the palace? But God took David through the back end of the city so that he could teach him principles that makes for kingship. I don't know about you, but God's word is revelation. Whatever, whether it's through his Bible, is revelation. Have you been waiting to get promotion at work and no one is talking to you? Seek revelation. You've been at that job for months and they've been planning to pay you some money, they didn't pay you. Seek revelation. When the word speaks the word, there's always reward. One of those days, still talking about revelations, I begin to wrap up. Things were not going right in my life. And I was walking, I remember I was, it was on a regular road, I was walking and I was saying, why is my, I was speaking to myself, why is my life about, always about highs and lows, mountains and valleys? Today I'm up there, today I'm down there, today I'm up there, today I'm down there. I'm tired of all this mountain and valley lifestyle. And I heard a voice, broad daylight, cars were passing. Said your life is not about ups and downs. Your life is not about mountains and valleys. Your ba life is about mountains and mountains. I said, ah, what are those times I was in a valley? He said, no, you are not in a valley, you are in a low mountain. That's revelation. That's the word of God. That's how to create your world. Because my world and your world, they are not the same thing. We may be in the same group in church. My life and your life, they are two separate things. They are not the same thing. I cannot use the revelation God gave you to push my own. I can use it to encourage my own life, but I cannot use it to form the basis for my own life. Praise the Lord. Prophecies. Prophecies are powerful. I mean, there are lots of prophecies that have gone out from 
the altar. Sometimes they are direct prophecies. Someone speaking to you. Sometimes it's the word. That's why I cannot understand why someone will come to church. If you don't want to come to church, stay at home. If you're in church, stay in church. Because some of these prophecies are not saying, hello, uh, Mentor Solomon, uh, um, I see you being promoted. It might be direct like that. But sometimes the word of God. And I shared it on this pulpit. I was just sitting down over there. And Reverend Sukomi was speaking. He said, someone somewhere who knows you will connect you to someone who does not know you somewhere, blah, blah, blah. Something like that. And I, I mean, as you may, I went to go and ease myself or I went outside to go and play. How would I get that word? I got that word. I soaked in that word and it entered me. I was so convinced. I put it on social media as, look, sometimes your prophecies, people's prophecies, you don't get it wrong. And people were liking, liking it. I, I celebrated it with all my heart. That was Sunday. On Thursday, I got a call from someone that I had not spoken to in almost 10 years. And he said, how would you like to work for this government? The commissioner will call you. I did not follow corner, corner, there about. A few days later, I was sitting in front of a state governor. I did not bribe nothing. In front of him, he was looking at me, koro, koro. I looked at him, koro, koro. Someone who knows me put me with someone who does not know my abilities and introduced me to the palace. Come on. Come on. Tell your someone, go for revelation. Go for revelation. God can create your world. He's still in the business of creating your world. I have about 10 minutes. I'll begin to wrap up. So prophecies work. Prophecies work. I wish I had time. I'll just share some things more. Now, we said in 2022, the siege is over. For some people, it is general revelation. For some people, it is personal revelation. Now, if it feels like general revelation, it's because you've not sat on the world to a point where it becomes personal revelation. Personal revelation is when you begin to get dimensions to the scriptures you've not seen before. That's personal revelation. So if the pastor declared that God said the siege is over and you do not feel Sit down and either dig the word to a point where it becomes your own or get another word. The funny thing is, if you are still under this umbrella, ultimately, you still experience the fact that the siege is over. Tell your neighbor the siege is over. The siege is over. Okay? Now, as I thought about the siege is over, do you know it's possible for a war to be over and you are still fighting? I'll give you an example. When the Second World War was over, when the principal parties had called a truce and they had agreed that the war is over, a mention, true life mention, has been said of a particular man, a particular army commander who kept on fighting. Because there was no means to communicate directly that if it's now, you just say the war is over, social media. They said this man, they said they sent people to this, everybody they sent to this man, this man kept fighting because he did not believe the war. He thought it was a trick. So it's possible for the war to be over and you're still fighting. It's possible to hear that the siege is over and you're still hiding. It takes personal revelation to come out of all of this. Praise the Lord. It is interesting, as I wrap up, that Genesis typifies and symbolizes the five stages of create, the creative process. Uh, people, career and business people know there's something called the creative process. The creative process is basically a critical thinking and solving, uh, problem solving template. Right? And what are those stages? Claire, you have preparation, you have incubation. You have illumination, you have evaluation, you have verification. Start again. If you have a product, it's still, it's still hovering in your mind. You're not sure what you want to do. So you take your time. It's a preparation stage. You are doing research. You are checking. Preparation. At some point, you get to a point where you narrow down to a particular idea. You are incubating. You are thinking. Then, pa, illumination. Light comes. You're like, yes, I got it. This is the product. I run with it. But you don't just run with it. There's evaluation. The product has to become live. has to be seen. You have to productize the service or satisfy the product. It has to be seen. It has to be in your hands. After that, there's verification. Check. If critical thinking and problem solving templates is the creative process, who gets it or who should have it? Who should own it more than the creator of heaven and earth? So he said, let there be light. But at first, there was nothing. The earth was, you know, empty. Go and boy. That was preparation. And then the Spirit of God comes back to the water. Incubation. And then he said, let there be light. There was illumination. And then saw that light was good. This is evaluation and verification. So when it comes to critical issues in your life, you want to solve it. God has already solved it. And he has given you the capacity to solve it. Are you going to solve it? It's now in your care. God has given you tools to create your world. It is up to you to use them. That's right to it.
Life by revelation is cheap. Creating your world by revelation is cheap. I can reel many stories. One of the first, I mean, the, we had we had a uh, for a long time. I have got the cash. You want to change it? Uh, Sienna, Army Cream. My wife had always said she wanted Sienna, Army Cream. So not just Sienna because of the road. She insisted she wanted a color was different, Army Cream. So one of those days we are still driving that jackpot, jackpot, jackpot. I went to Blue Camp. I I I settled I settled issues with Blue Camp. I go there, go and collect one. I I settled issues over there. I remember when my son was not feeling well, Hero. Hero always felt ill. Hero always felt ill. Always falling sick. Today, tomorrow is falling sick. My mother in law was there one of those days. One of these days, I told my wife, let's go to Deep Camp and settle this thing. My wife didn't say no. She just followed me, went to camp. We didn't get a smaller room, we got a bigger place. It was on this bed, or was on this bed, because sometimes when you go to settle issue, you know, you know, you know that kind of stuff. You don't allow, uh -huh. that is spiritual. I woke up from the bed. Bam! As I woke up, my wife woke up at the same time. I told my wife I had a dream. My wife said I had a dream. The dream my wife narrated was exactly the dream I had. What kind of technology is that? Two separate people, two separate beds, same dream. We stood up, we did that thing that we saw in the dream. Instantly. Instantly. He rose to the until now. I don't know if the man is going to wish for. Till now. The revelation is powerful. So I want to say, we need to change this car. At least sometimes your life is changing. Let the car show that at least something has moved on. You can't be driving this small, this sad chapa. I went there and I was talking to God. God said, what, what kind of car do you want? Ah, what kind of car? God planted. I said, one man was saying, say brand new car. The other man was saying, ah, where will the money come? Brand new car, where will the money come? Then I I, 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 I got half I said, God, give me a car. That, give, me, give us a car that is fitting. So I do look like I came back a few days later. Guess what? I went to see somebody. Then I saw in a particular place that there was one blue sienna. So I went to go and price to see how much. As I was pricing it, a guy in a, in an army green sienna was driving by my side. I saw it. He didn't want to to me, but green sienna. And he was looking at me. So why is this man looking at me now? The next thing, the man reversed. He said, I noticed that you were checking that car, but that car will give you trouble. If you want this car, you can negotiate. Actually, the owner of this car just got it travel to the US. The car had been in Ghana, they just let me just push it and take it out. But they treated it. I'm in this year now. But that's not the point. This is my point. When I brought it to church, Pastor Chris, I told Pastor Mass, the pastor saw it. The first thing Pastor said, I realized that that piece of money to have a brand new car. The first word Pastor Chris said is that Mark. This guy is beating. Hey! Uh -oh. your hands. Let's just talk to God. Revelation. They said the siege is over. The siege is truly over. If you don't have a particular specific revelation, it's because you've not done it. The siege is over. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Lord, we give you all the glory. Blessed be your name. The siege is over. Truly over. Everything we wanted, everything we ever wanted, is available. It's available on this side of revelation. We believe in Jesus. We believe in the Holy Spirit. We believe in God. God is a creator. And therefore, since we are made in His image, we have the capacity to create. We are co-creators. This week, we begin to manifest the fullness of God's creation in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' precious name, we pray.